enter a different part of this lecture, which is actually a very, a very sad part. You know that people in Africa shoot monkeys. There is a monkey here in a tree. Very happy. <laughs> and here is a hunter who never took 801. <laughs> and he has a, a gun, which is a golf ball gun. And he aims that gun right at the monkey. He shoots it with a certain velocity, the golf ball. Let this be the speed, be zero. So the horizontal component, you're going to see that again and again, v0 cosine alpha, and the vertical component equals v0 sine alpha. Let this be my increasing value of y, and this be my increasing value of x. This um, golf ball, this, this golf gun, is really not first class, thank goodness. And so, when the hunter shoots this golf ball, this happens. And it ends up here at point P. Lucky monkey <laughs> so far. Now, it is very tragic, but true, that when the monkey sees the flash of the gun, it lets go. <laughs> and now comes the question, is the monkey safe or is this the last day of the monkey? <laughs> I ask the following question. This would be the trajectory with no gravity, and this is the trajectory with gravity. We can both agree on that. At a certain moment, T1, let us assume that the golf ball would have been here without gravity. Then I know exactly where it is with gravity. It must be exactly here because the exposition x t1 is the same because the horizontal velocity is the same. That's independent of whether there is gravity or not. There is no acceleration in the x direction. And so, they are both exactly at the same exposition. What is this difference? Well, that is the difference between the equation with gravity and without gravity. And y, as a function of time, you can look at equation number three there, if you can still see it, equals v zero y, which is v zero sine alpha, time t, minus one-half gt squared. Well, if there is no gravity, this term doesn't exist. So that's this straight line. With gravity, it's the same thing, but you have to subtract this. Therefore, this distance is one-half gt one square. That is this distance. Because this curve is lower by this amount. Now comes the time that the golf ball hits point P. When its position is x t two, and the time here is t two, that means if there had been no gravity, the golf ball would have been there. They must have the same position in x at this catastrophic moment. 
So what now is the distance between the monkey and the golf ball, the distance between the two trajectories, one trajectory no gravity, the other with gravity, this distance equals one-half g t two squared for that same reason. And we all know that if the monkey at time t equals zero let go, that in t two seconds it will have fallen exactly over a distance one-half g t two squared. Exactly. This couldn't be more tragic. <laughs> and he will be killed. You may say, well, yeah, but you have manipulated the speed of that gun just so nicely. Oh, no. Oh, no. I can shoot that with a higher speed at the same angle alpha, and the trajectory would be this, and the monkey would be killed there. I can do it with a lower speed, and the monkey would be killed here. It's independent of the speed of the bullet. Because always this part here is always exactly the distance that the monkey falls in that time. However, if the speed is very low, that it hits the ground before the monkey hits the ground, well, okay, then the monkey is safe. So the only thing that is very, very critical is alpha. It must be precisely aimed at the monkey. If that's not the case, then the monkey will be safe. Now, before we will witness this classic and rather tragic drama, I want to look at this from a somewhat different point of view, namely from the point of view of the monkey. The monkey sits there, looks at the gun, and the golf ball comes to the monkey. And I will put them both in a room, which is an elevator, and the elevator is in free fall, and they don't even know that. They both fall with the acceleration g. Here is the monkey, three, and here is the gun. The velocity of that bullet is v zero. And so the monkey will see that bullet come straight at him. There's no such thing as an arc. They both fall in this falling, gra in this falling elevator, and so the bullet comes. The monkey happens to be a very intelligent monkey. And the monkey says to himself, how long do I have to live? And the monkey makes the following calculation. If this distance is d, and this is h, then the monkey says, aha, this is the square root of d squared plus h squared. So from the monkey point of view, the time for the kill will be the square root of d squared plus h squared divided by v zero. That's how many seconds he has to live. But you people are also quite smart. And you look at this diagram, and you said, no, no way. If this distance is d, then the speed to reach this point is v zero cosine alpha. In other words, the time that it takes for this object to reach this value of x, so for 26, 100 MIT students, T kill equals D divided by V zero cosine alpha. But what is the cosine of alpha? That is D divided by the square root of D squared plus H squared. So I can replace this cosine alpha by D divided by the square root. So I can replace this cosine alpha by d divided by the square root. And you and the monkey agree 
exactly on the amount of time that the monkey has to live. It better be that way, because this could not depend on which reference frame you work in, the falling reference frame or, for that matter, the reference frame of 26100. The monkey will be placed at a, about three meters above the table. We all know that it takes about 0.8 seconds. We have done many experiments at three meters. It takes about 0.8 seconds. So the whole thing will go very fast. We were going to put the monkey up there. I want you to first see the trajectory of that golf ball before we ha bring the monkey in. I mean, it is already so painful for this monkey, you don't want him to pre-experience what's going to happen. <laughs> so we will do this in the absence of the monkey, and we will let you, I will let you see what roughly the trajectory of that bullet will be. Three, two, one, zero. So it will hit somewhere here. That's that point P. So when you're going to see the drama in action, this is where the monkey will reach when the two hit each other. Now, you can imagine that this is a very painful day for the monkey. And I'm going to get the monkey. He's behind here, and I hope that you would pay some respect to Robert. His name is Robert, <laughs> and it may take me a minute. Here is Robert. <laughs> I thought <laughs> I thought it was appropriate to change for the occasion. <laughs> I don't go on monkey hunts too often. But when I do it, I'd like to do it in style. Here is Robert, and we're going to put Robert up here. Robert has in his head a metal plate. So that when we activate the electromagnet, that we can stick him on there. And when we take the current off, then Robert will fall. So this is the activation of the electromagnet. So here we go. I can see Robert is nervous. <laughs> and you can't blame him. This is not the greatest day of his life. <laughs> oh, by the way, I want you to know, I mean, we are not cruel here. He's wearing a bulletproof vest. Oh boy, I can, I can feel he's shaking all over his body. He's very nervous. Robert, don't let go yet. Oh, let me show you, it's important that you know that we have done everything we can to aim this gun as accurately as we can at Robert. Robert, don't let go yet. We've got to first cock the gun. Hold it now. Hold it, Robert. 
This happens always with Robert. Okay, he just promised me that he will not let go again. <laughs> when I cock the gun, if I can find the golf ball, it's here, then the electric circuit takes over and now the current will be disconnected when the gun is fired. E even, I, even I'm nervous. I admit it, you know, this is a terrible thing to do. Terrible thing to do. You ready? Three, two, one, zero. Poor monkey. See you Friday.